saying, what is it that you have that you do not receive? And if you receive that, why are you glorying? Why are you priding yourself? So one moment you have that, you must know, you must believe that all those things was given to you by God. You didn't get them by your power. Because even your life, your life was given to you by God. And everything you have in this life belongs to God. And so you have to humble yourself so that God will continue to bless you. So that you will not live your life as you go. That it's not by struggling, by a human wisdom or sense of power that you will never get to where you are going. Next thing to me, all what you need to do today is recognize God. Are you know what I'm saying? Recognize Him and then resort to Him and depend on Him and ask for the grace and ask for His power and ask for His help and ask that His Spirit will take you to where you are going. I'm assuring God will see you through. I said God will see you through in Jesus' name. Take note. If God did not give blessings, blessings of all kinds, if God did not give it or gifts or power or even convert, if God will not give them, I want you to understand that we can never have those things. Are you marrying me? You are struggling to get it, and God is not giving it for you. No matter how you struggle, you will really get at nothing. And if you mistakenly get those things, those things will lead you to destruction. The Bible says in Psalm 24 verse 1, The earth is of the Lord, and the fullness thereof. And then that when there is, everything belongs to God. And then you came into this world, you are struggling, you are struggling to get those things, and you bad God. Are you not a thief? Even though you struggle to get to the top, God will bring you now. Even though you struggle to get those things, you will go and send the person to destruction. Even if you get those things in isolation of God, and then you go those things by your power, that person will end up in hell fire. Because that person is a thief. So, I want you to understand, all the blessings of heaven came from God. Everything I see today, everything that you have today, was a gift from God. And if God is the one that gives it to you, you must depend on that God. You must not do or struggle as you do. It is by your power. It is not by struggle. It is by the grace of God. So, it is very clear that if we try to do or do those things on our own way, we may offend the Lord. In fact, we will offend the Lord. For the Bible says, in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, it says, It is not by power nor by might. It is by spirit, says the Lord. So, let us recognize God and refer to Him for all our needs, whether spiritual or physical or material or financial, whatever be the need in this life, recognize God. Are you hearing me? If you believe that whatever you are looking for is a gift, why do you struggle for the gift? Answer me now. If you believe that whatever you are looking for in this world is a gift from God, why are you struggling for it? I don't know what I feel like I'm making. Do you need to struggle to get a gift? And some in her? No. There's no way she struggle to get a gift. The person giving you the gift is giving it out of his mercy, out of his love. It is not by struggle. Therefore, there's no point struggling to be rich, struggling to get to the top, struggling to make it in life, struggling to get connected, to be healed, to be free. All what you need to do is recognize that God is the giver of all things. And then come to me and look up unto him and pray and say, Give me, O oh God. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, please open your Bible. Matthew chapter 7. I don't know your needs. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, he says, Ask. That's the only thing you are going to do. What is the struggling about asking? Answer me. What is the struggle about asking or asking anything? He said, ask. What happened? Ask. I don't know what you're looking for. I don't know what you want in this life. Asking from your father. Your father who asked in heaven. As you ask for that divine healing today, the Lord will give you a body. As you ask for salvation today, without struggle, the Lord will give you salvation. As you ask today, that God will bless you, God will make you to be rich, 
Some will give you their own husband. Some will give you their own wife. Some will give you their own children. Some will give you the world. It is not by struggle. As what happened, it shall be given to you. Therefore, whatever you need, spiritually, physically, materially, financially, ask it from the Lord. For the Bible said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, But my God shall supply all your needs according to Jesus' glory by Christ Jesus. God, our Father, He will supply all our needs. So what do you need to do? Ask this thing for your Father. I want to ask you a question. Do you struggle to ask your father to train you to school? Did you struggle to ask your father to train you to school? Now, as your father took care of you without struggling, God is richer than your father and is incomparable. God will care for his own children. But the Bible says, healing are children's bread. Miracles are children's bread. If you be a child of God, will he give you the miracle? Please answer me. I say please answer me. All what you needed to do today to make sure, to make sure you are in the right relationship with God. That nothing is standing between you and God. No wonder Jesus says to you in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. He said, Come unto me. All you that never and never know the word have all. I will make you rest. My sisters and brothers, God has promised. He's the faithful God. Whatever you promise, it has the resources to fulfill it. It has the power to bring them to pass. All what you need to do, ask, and it shall be given you. And when you ask, you believe that God has given it to you, and you see those things coming to pass your life. If you look at Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Mark chapter 9. And verse 23, he says, If thou canest believe, all things are possible with him that believeth. All things from A to Z. I don't know what I'm looking for today. All things are possible if you can believe. God will give you all things if you can ask and believe. And as I come today, you don't need to struggle at all at all. That man said, If thou will, Thou canst make me living clean. And Jesus said, I will be thou clean. And if that man will act so arrogantly like that, so careless like that, and the Lord did it for him, and you will come to that prayer, and you say, God, do it for me. You are not saying if you like. You are not saying if you will. But you will pray and say, God, please do it for me. Now, let me ask you a question. You and that man who said, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. And you that is saying, please do it for me. And the man is saying, God, if you like, who is trying to make the, the, the blessings? And Sammy now, somebody came to Jesus and said, if you will, you can make me clear. But you are saying that God, please do it for me. Who is more qualified? And Sammy. The person who says, if you like, if you will, you can heal me. If you like, you can deliver me. But you are saying, I like, do it for me. So then, if you live here without a miracle, then, then something was wrong with you. Are you hearing me? We are not strong, even if you are sick, God will do it for you. I mean, you can't get up. You don't even know how to shout. I don't do it for me, oh, do it for me. Like other people in the prayer now. Some people say, I will do it for me. Even if you say, God, heal me, the miracle will come your way. You don't even know how to pray. Say, God, open my ways. Miracle was not going to be. They say, God, give me favor. Connect me. Just one sentence. Miracle will find your way. You don't need the struggling. I don't know what I'm going to pray for my So then let us pray. You begin to struggle. Push this pole. Push this place. Run up and down. Say, do it for me. Do it for me. I beg, do it. Why not? Do it, man. Do it, man. Why not? You don't need it for that. I don't know what I'm going to do today. You don't need it for them. What you needed is quietly and simply go before the Lord and ensure that nothing is standing between you and God. And ask what happened. Will he give it? Let us find out. Will he give it? Are you sure? There like that. Only ask. Speak. No. Now we are going to test it for them. Praise the Lord. We are going to prove if God answers prayer today. 
But sister, let me ask you a question. Do you believe that God will answer you today? Today, my God shall supply all your needs. According to this, is glory by Christ Jesus. He says in John chapter 14. Let's read. John chapter 14. Let's read from verse 13. John chapter 14 and verse 13. I want somebody you shall ask in my name that will I do. That the Father will be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, what happens? Can we lie? In John chapter 16, verse 24. John chapter 16 and verse 24. He that will have you asked me nothing. He that will have you asked nothing in my name. Ask. And you shall see that your joy may be full. Do you want your joy to be full today? Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened up for everyone that asketh the same So, I am believing God. Nobody shall struggle today. And so, ask and believe today, your Lord God will come. Can I hear you say amen to that? So for those who are sinners and are sliders, they should repent and confess their sins and accept Jesus Christ into their lives as the Lord and personal Savior and it shall be well with them. Remember, in Proverbs of the 28th verse 13, he said, He that covered it with sins shall not go far. For those who are confess them and forsake them to have mercy. If you want God to forgive you today, please amend your ways. For a Christian is not a sinner, and a sinner is not a Christian. If you look at 1 John chapter 3 verse 8, it says, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Last night, who say that is one of God? Not not to me sin, but he still in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. Six sisters and brothers. If you look at the place we read now, you discover a Christian is not a sinner, and a sinner is not a Christian. If you are living in sin, you can claim to be a Christian. And so all what you have to do is to confess your sins and renounce them and promise them no more. So you may ask them, what is sin? If you look at first John chapter 5 verse 17 there, it says, all unrighteousness is sin. Anything that is not righteousness is what? Sin. Anger is sin. Hatred is sin. Pride is sin. Lying is sin. And if you are eating these things, confess them and renounce them. I will show you mercy. I don't know the wickedness I into. Those who are into lusting after everything. Those who are into masturb- masturbation, lesbianism, homosexualism. All those people who are into adultery, fornication. And those who are into killing, abortion, murder. Confess and say, Lord, I'm sorry. And if you are into covetousness, confess it and say, Lord, I'm sorry. That's right. Confession, bitterness. Keeping malice and bearing gross, you must confess and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I will never try this sins anymore. All those people who are into envy, murmuring, complaining, you must renounce it. Swearing with heaven and earth, or watching idol, or making idol, or having idol in your heart, you must confess and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I will never try this sins anymore. Such your life, the righteous shall not be in the kingdom of God. All those who are costing people or swearing with heaven and earth, you must repent today. And those who speak evil and speak evil of one another, you must confess and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I will never try this sins anymore. If you are among those people that belong to secret cause or open cause, foreign cause or local cause or witchcraft cause, renounce those things and burn their property and surrender life to Jesus Christ. And those who are into duping, 419, you've been black people, white people, you've been the, the, the bank or the government, you must repent today. Or you're into stealing, picking pockets, and robbery, killing people, collecting their property. Confess those sinful and say, Lord, I'm sorry. But, uh, listen to me, there are so many people who claim to be Christians and they speak with the nice herbalists 
That is wickedness. If you are going to have this, you must gather all their property and bond those things. You must renounce every initiation. You must promise God that you will never go there anymore. Or maybe you are harmless. You must gather those things and bond them. That is a terrible deception. For anybody that is not God to go into those things. And so, amend your ways and the Lord will show you mercy. I don't know the evil you are into. Those who are into fighting and quarreling, those who are into prostitution, that is wickedness in the sight of God. Disobedience and stubbornness in the, in the things of God, in the word of God. You must be thankful and say, Lord, show me mercy. I don't know what you are into. All those people who are giving bribe and taking bribe and extorting money from people because of the uniform, because of the position, you must renounce those things and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I will never try them anymore. The Lord will show you mercy. Such your life. Those angels love me. All those people who are drinking alcoholics, either one percent or half percent, whether local or foreign ones, white people, Rukutu, beer, hot drinks, no matter how many percent, you must confess it and promise God no more. And if you are buying it from people, you say no. If you are selling it, you still resign. If you stop selling it, you close that place. Or change it another thing. You must not continue to come to this place and then sell alcoholics. That is what you the sight of God. Or maybe you are working in brewery. You must have Or you are serving in the hotel. Where well, they are serving for those things. If you really want to make heaven. If you really want to follow Jesus. You must resign from that useless or wicked appointment. I ask God to forgive you for all the past life. The Lord will show you mercy. All those people. Listen to me. Who are into smoking cigarettes in their home. marijuana. You must do the same thing. You must not smoke it, you must not sell it, you must not work in tobacco company. And if you are into those things, you will stop it. And this is a mission for you. Set your life. Now is the acceptable time to know your baby through this. Set your life. I don't know the wickedness you are into. Now is the acceptable time. If you are among those who are into polygamous marriage, take note of what I'm saying now. Marriage is between a man and a woman. And marriage is for better for worse. And marriage is until the death. Do you fast? And if you are there now, my sisters and brothers, and you have left your husband or you have left your wife, and behold, that man is your first wife or your first time husband, or what you need to do after hearing me today. You must go and reconcile with that woman. You must go and consult with that man and amend your ways. And if you are a second wife, or third wife, or fourth wife, or if you are a man, a married three wives, you must remove the second and third wife. And if you are a second wife, or third wife, you must pack your bag and go as a matter of restriction. Amend your ways. Because if you die in that wrong marriage, you can never see the kingdom of God. Therefore, amend your ways. And the Lord will show you mercy. The Lord will forgive you. He will cleanse you. He will wash you in the blood of Jesus. He will give you the grace to become a Christian. If you're there, and you're among those women that put attachment and wisdom and farming and painting and blessing and jewelry and bango and earrings, it is sweet goodness. As long as you're holding those things, your deliverance will be very far. Because you're still holding the property of the devil. You can not with you. Therefore, search your life. All those women make him up. With all those ornaments, earrings, and attachment, and wisdom, and famine, gather them and bring them. And if you are among those women that exposes your chest, your armpits, your tongue, your waist, your laps, it is abomination in the sight of God. You must repent of those things and gather those places and bring them. All you drink and bring them. It is wickedness for you to live your life in seducing men. The opposite says it is wickedness. Therefore, such your life. And confess that wickedness and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I will never dress like this anymore. And if a young man that put on rough hair, very cold, farming, and then plating your head, it is wickedness in the sight of God. And if you associate a, a lady or woman that always put on trousers, whether you have one trousers or have one, you must burn it. That is not the life of a Christian. That is not a Christian blessing. Therefore, search your life. Gather those houses and burn them. For the Bible said in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 42, verse 5, 
He says, a woman should not put on a wish pertaining to man. A man should not put on that wish pertaining to woman. All that do that are abomination before God. Any woman wearing trousers is abomination before God. Any man wearing skirt and blouse is an abomination before God. And therefore, if they are into such things, they gather them, bond them, and promise God no more. Remember, my sisters and brothers, the Bible said in John chapter 6, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth to you should not perish, but have everlasting life. My sisters and brothers, since you are alive, Christ has paid the price of your sin. There is no reason for you to remain in sin or die in your sin. Now is acceptable time. And then your ways, and Christ will give you life. For the Bible says, in the book of John, chapter 19, verse 30, Jesus said it is finished, and that is the price of your sin. He died, he suffered and died for you. And the cross of Calvary, and shed his special blood for you. You must appreciate it and welcome Jesus into your life. For Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. My sisters and brothers, if you want to be reconciled to God, if you want to receive the nature of God, you must pass to Jesus Christ. Remember the Bible said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And Christ has shed that blood. And the that blood is standing as an outstanding provision for you. If only you will surrender to Jesus and bring that blood to the salvation will be your portion. Remember, in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10, day, Jesus said, I call that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 36, he said, If the Son that will make you free, you shall be free indeed. And Romans of a seas and verse 23, he says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I want you to look at John chapter 1 verse 12. The Bible says, But as many as receive him, to them will be power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And so, sisters and brothers, my friends who are here, surrender to Jesus, he will give you the power of sonship, and your life will change totally. Remember, in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, the Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new Christian. So things are passed away, and the world all things have become new. And so, my brothers and sisters, there is no point of deceiving yourself and calling yourself a Christian. Why are you still living a compromising Christian? Why are you still lying? Why are you still full of yourself? Why are full of, full of uh, wickedness, lusting, and, pr- and pride, and selfishness, and fighting, and quarreling, and anger, and you're still coming to be a Christian? And many in your ways, if you are in Christ, you will be a new creature, and there will be no unrighteousness in you, because all unrighteousness is sin. So, search your life, and then amend your ways, and call upon the Lord today, salvation shall be your portion. Remember, in Romans of the same verse 13, he said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you want to be saved, if you want to be blessed, if you want to be delivered today, as we pray now, if you want God to bless you at ease, to bless you and not by struggle, you must make sure that nothing is standing between you and God. Let's read this message before we pray now. In First Peter chapter one and verse fourteen. First Peter chapter one verse fourteen. He says, as obedient children, not concerning yourselves, according to the former loss in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy. So be holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Without holiness, no eyes shall see the Lord. My brothers and sisters, he said, Be ye holy, for I, the Lord, you are not, I am holy. If you don't want to continue in struggling, the Bible said in Matthew chapter 5, and in verse 8, he said, Blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall see 
see God. If you want to see God, you must endeavor to maintain the dignity of heart, holiness. For the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14, it said, follow peace with all men. And holiness, push it out. No eyes can see the Lord. You want to sing me your prayers. You want God to answer your prayers. Maintain purity and not fasting. Maintain holiness and not troubling. If that will happen today, even before you call upon the Lord, the Lord will answer you. But do you know that? If you're living a righteous life, a holy life, before ever you pray, God will answer. But do you believe it is possible? And, so are you tired? Are you very tired? Now, listen to me. In Isaiah, I want to show you something. I'm about to pray for you, but listen, all these places are very important to you so that you will not struggle again. Because many people have thought that Christian life is by struggle. It is not by struggle at all at all. In Isaiah 65, and verse 24, Isaiah chapter 65, and verse 24. Open your Bible. Isaiah 65, verse 24. Look at that place. And it shall come to pass that before the call, what happened? Before the call, what happened? I will answer. Why the are you speaking? What happened? I will hear. Oh, that's what is happening here today. If you are feeling living right, before you call, God will answer you. Before you finish speaking today, God of heaven will hear you from above in Jesus' name. I don't know what they are passing through. So many people, why they are living in sin, they are fasting, they are struggling, they are using their brain and thinking it is by power. Maintain purity, maintain holiness today. Before you pray, God will answer. Before you finish talking, God will hear. That is the principle of God. It is not by struggle. Can I hear you say amen? Look at this place finally before we pray. All this things. This is so that I can pray for you. In First John chapter 5 and verse 18. First John chapter 5. In verse 18, we know that whosoever is born of God, sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God, he fed himself. And that wicked one touched him not. If you will keep yourself from sin today, the devil can never touch your hair. He can never touch your business. He can never touch your, you know, your, your prosperity. He can never touch you at all, at all. And so many people, why they open the door of sin? They be asking God, answer me, heal me, deliver me, provide for me. Why the door of sin is open and the devil is coming left, right, from the back and tormenting the person? Because of sin, you will find the person, you know, the person, Struggling, struggling, and becoming offended and angry. I said, God, where are you? God, where are you? Why is it that you cannot answer me? God will answer you. If you will maintain purity of heart. For blessed are the pure in heart. What happened? For they shall see God. Are you ready to see God now? Look at Matthew, Matthew, and Matthew chapter 6, verse 3. He said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things are the added on the Lord. The kingdom of God first and his righteousness. My sisters and brothers, make up your mind as you pray now. Go for the right thing and mend their ways. Make sure that nothing is standing between you and God. And they call upon God in purity. And the God of heaven, the God of holiness, will answer your prayers. And today, we are not going to struggle at all at all. As, as soon as you amend your life, any prayer that makes in righteousness, the devil will answer that prayer. Do you think God will answer? Rise up and let us pray. Rise up. As you rise up now, I'm assuring you, it's not going to be by struggle as long as you amend your life. And you show that nothing standing between you and God. Everybody open your mouth and begin to confess your sins and amend their way and you show purity and then pray in God's name today. God will answer. As you give your hands up today, God will show you mercy and greater power. And that life of unrighteousness will be known in your life. I'm waiting for the person I'm talking about. Raise the hand up. I want to see that has eyes closed and head down. 
there are so many of you who have been given and given and given, but you don't have any for sure you are given. Nothing to show if you are giving. You have been giving and giving and giving. Anytime they call you to give, you give. But nothing to show if you are giving. Now you are going to receive favor. Next thing, God is going to give you surprises. Somebody there, you are going to get a, get a wonderful job. But they will add a car for that employment. 